Before we get into the construction of this, I want to take and give you some things you want to consider. One is the size of your reservoir and where you want to place it. Now, I put it here to where I could get it underneath my Dutch buckets. It made everything a lot simpler on the return and saved space in this little hot tub room. Now, these tubs are from the big box stores. You'll notice, you'll know them right off where they have that ribbed lid to them. This is a 27 or 29 gallon, I don't remember which. And what I've done here is my whole framework is set on two cinder blocks. And I've got them like uh, every, uh, on the ends here, I'm about five feet. And then I go to about four foot all the way around. And there on the corner where I have two directions coming together, I have four of them under there and around. Now to show you the, the whole framework of this, you can see there that I'm, I capped the end here so that uh, they wouldn't spread on me and I'm good. And I used the 2x4 to get some added height out of that so that my reservoir would slip under there. Okay, that's going to give you the intro on this. And now we'll start on the construction. I want to show you how I make my Dutch bucket system. Now let's start off with the reservoir. I'm going to take that brick off that holds that lid on. Now all I did for a lid, I'm using a half inch piece of that foam. And it's easy to cut, so you can just do it with a knife. Now let's look at my res reservoir here. Now in here, you can see that over here in the far end, there's a pump. Now I do have a ball valve on that, but it's not needed. I've got an aquarium heater laying in there. And here where our temperatures are freezing, I'd keep my water about 60, 64 degrees, something like that. And all of these pipes, now this is a return pipe for just these three buckets. And this is the return pipe for all the other 15 or 16 buckets, depending on how many I have hooked up. I'll show you the whole system, and we'll go from there. Okay, here in the back, you can see there is my feed line that comes up with that blue ribbed piece of pipe. And that feeds this whole feed line. That whole feed line is half inch PVC and it just runs down here all the way to the end. I make a corner there and head the other direction. Now here on the end, I've got one bucket missing out of there and in here I'm using these T's. Now this T is slip on both ends. These two are slip and this one is a threaded. Now when you buy joints they'll say slip on the ends or this one here will say FPT or female pipe thread. I run that over and I've got some unions in here just because I use some scrap pieces and that and then I've got a ball valve here with a hose fitting. Now I use that for draining my whole system, which I train, trade out my nutrient once a month. So all I do is I hook a hose on there, open that valve up. On all of my little feeder valves here, I turn them off. And that way no nutrient is coming into the bucket. And that forces all the nutrient through that pipe and out. And with a, I have a pump that's 300 gallons per hour, which pumps the whole system down in about five minutes. And when I do that, I can slide this whole reservoir out 
wash it all out, put it back together, and I'm good to go. Now, here is something that's totally optional. Uh, if you guys can have water to your reservoirs as it's needed, no problem. Here, I put a float valve in here. I run the tubing from that float valve up here to this drum. Now that drum supplies any uh, water that's needed in there. And then I check my nutrient every three, four days just to make sure I'm still in balance. Okay, let's go into the construction of this. Basically, here is the whole system in a nutshell. You have a pump. In that, on that pump, I'm using a threaded union. This is half inch female thread on both ends. This line can just screw into it and it screws into this elbow here, which is female pipe thread to slip. Now, my, uh, my pipe, my feeder pipe is all half inch PVC with a slip on each end and a threaded female pipe thread that goes to my riser. Uh, on the end of that riser, I've got one of these little drip valves and I put in my tubing here and that goes directly into my bucket. Okay, now let's look at the bucket. Your bucket is these particular ones I got from a shop that we got here in Oregon called uh, Grocery Bandit and they sell for three dollars a bucket. They're uh, three dollar or three gallon black food grade buckets and they don't come with lids they do come with the handles but i just take the handles out now the, what i do is i want everything uniform on these so i've got a, a l bracket here that is two inches here so all i do when it comes time to, to drill these I slip that bracket under there and that's my drill point and that way each one of these the center of that hole is two inches above the base and that allows for this much nutrient to stay in that bucket at all times now what you need here is one of these grommets we get these grommets from Granger they're a 3MPL8, and when I got these, they were uh, $11.20 for 50, and they had $11.68 shipping, which come to $22.88, which works out to $0.46 cents a piece. If you try buying those grommets individually, they're going to cost you a buck and a half or more a piece, so... Get the 50 pack. You'll use them sooner or later. You can see that out of 50, that's all I got left. Because I've used them on everything. This being a truly DIY type system, you need to take and just make it to fit your needs. Now here on the return, I've got a capped inch and a half PVC. And... I've got a hole drilled in here that's like one inch. Each one of these has the return stuck in there. Now if you look at this, you'll see on this board, see how where that pipe is? We just put a gradual decline in it all the way around. Now here I've got three buckets with a corner one in there and you can see that that thing is dropping a little more each one of these buckets until we get to the end. Now I've got my return here. Now on the return we've got all of these half inch feeders on there so I'm using an inch and a half on the pipe with a three quarter inch drain on it. This is what that drain looks like and it's just stuck in there with three quarter inch pipe 
versus the half inch that's used on the inlet side. Now, when it comes to doing this stuff, I recommend you get a pair of PVC cutters. These work real good. You'll just stick your PVC in there. This will ratchet down and cut that right off, and it's effortless. It takes just a few seconds versus using a hacksaw on these pipes that you're going to put in here. You're going to have an elbow on each end with this short spout to reach your return line, however deep that is. And in here, you're going to have like a six inch piece of PVC coming in that'll bring you to the center. This elbow just slips on there. Now, the only thing that I glue on this whole system is this line here. That is all going to be under pressure. So you don't have to worry about needing to seal any of these other fittings that aren't under pressure. And that's going to take and give you your return. Now, the trick on doing these is just take a a file or piece of sandpaper and put a bevel on the end of that. It makes it a lot easier on getting it through this grommet. Now when you do these grommets, you're going to drill these holes. A lot of people tell you to use a one inch drill. If you use a 15 16 a lot more snug, less apt to ever leak. So use that or on the tail end of this I'm going to do screenshots of all of the parts that are being used so you guys can see what I'm, I'm using on this stuff. And I'm getting all of this stuff from different suppliers. Gasket grommets are coming from Granger. And if you have a Granger in your area, you can just stop in and pick up a bag of 50 of these. All of my, my uh, PVC fittings in that, I'm getting from an outfit called Drip. Depot and their prices are quite a bit less than anything you'll find anywhere else as far as the big box stores. Now some of the big box stores when you get into the big quantities of fittings such as the elbows you can get a price break on them by buying the bags of 10 or more. Now with Drip Depot they have a piece price on them and their piece price works out to less than what the bulk price is that you get from the big box stores. Now what I'm using here for my pump in this whole system is I got this 24 volt pump from Amazon and it's 300 gallons per hour and that seems to be enough to take and supply this whole thing without any problems. Now, you guys were wondering about these socks that are in here that are full of my perlite. All they are are five gallon paint strainers. You don't need the ones with the elastic on them, so save a buck or two there and just get the regular paint strainers. Those will fill your bucket and hold all your perlite. Now, once you do a uh, a grow on this and you want to take and reuse your perlite and your buckets and everything else all you need to do is take that perlite let me take and uh, show you some of this I'm using a coarse mix on this and you can see here that it's fairly coarse I got some from Walmart and it said coarse but it come back that it was a really powdery stuff. And by the time you rinsed it all out and got all of the silt out from that powder, you had about half as much. So keep that in mind if you're bulk ordering stuff. If you want to make sure that your tubes stay down in the perlite and don't work their way out or that, you can just take about a six inch piece of PVC pipe Put that down into the root area and slip your tubing into it. Now once you get all this done, make sure you check and see that you have flow 
in each one of them tubes. The construction of it's fast and easy, providing you're using one of them cutters, that'll cut your time by about 60% or more, and it, it saves a lot of cleanup work on each cut, where if you're using a hacksaw, you're going to have to ream these on the inside with some sandpaper, same on the outside, so with these, you get a clean cut every time, and you're good to go. So, I hope that helps, and again, if you have any problems or comments, go ahead and uh, you can shoot me an email at uh, Turner Just Show Me at Gmail or Hey Old Man 1947 at gmail.com. Okay, that's going to do it. And again, I hope this helps, and I'll see you on that next one.